boy, do I have a treat for you guys today. So a few weeks ago, I posted a video of a massive video game pickup that I did. The next week, I showed you guys all the NES games from that lot. Then the next week, we went through all of the SNES stuff. Well, this right here, this is pretty much the rest of it. And what we're gonna do today is go through all of these boxes and bins and bags of video game gold, see what the heck is actually in here, cause a good amount of this stuff I haven't actually individually gone through, and just kinda have fun rediscovering all of this together. It's not going to be a super value heavy episode, cause frankly, I don't wanna take the time to calculate all of this for a video. I paid around 1400, I believe, for everything that you'll see here. But as far as what it will actually go for online, well, you guys are welcome to try to keep track as we go along if you want. Also gotta give a quick shout out here to my new desk setup, which is coming along splendidly. Got the uh, monitors mounted over here, a nice little pad as well. But some of the flashiest improvements to the office revitalization project that I've been doing are actually still to come in the next few weeks or so here. So definitely stay tuned for that. So I think we'll just go ahead and oh, get rolling here with this first bag. Not really sure what's in it. The biggest thing that I'll be doing today is uh, taking the stuff that is worth while to sell on Amazon or maybe eBay individually, putting it over here and then taking the rest and putting it in this Ikea bag right here to go off to my local video game store as trade-in. Some examples of games that are going there already are like Call of Duty on the PS, <gasps> PS3, uh, Skylanders on the Wii U, Decca Sports on the Wii, the kind of titles that once you pay shipping and fees just aren't going to make you much money, if any at all, by selling them on eBay or Amazon. And I actually just had the idea, I think it could be really cool to actually do this segment in first person basically. So I think I'm gonna strap the GoPro on as if I'm going to a yard sale and you guys will be able to see in real time just as I am, what the heck this stuff is worth, what's in here, and what kind of treasures we find. So uh, let's do it that way. Okay, so it looks like outside of the case, which you can see definitely, it looks like a dog, dog got to it or something like that. But it looks like the lowest listed copy on Amazon is $20. So this one will be our first game that goes over here in the sell on Amazon pile. Up next we have, oh wow. Wow. Hold up, is that actually in there? Oh my gosh, if that's the game I'm thinking of, that's like a really valuable Xbox game. Let's see if it comes up here when I scan it with Amazon. It didn't. Let me look it up on eBay. Yeah, dude, check that out. 38, 40, 36. This is definitely a 30 plus dollar game in complete condition. This one disc only sold for 20. So I think that's a solid uh, 15 plus five shipping. This is around a $20 game. So not quite as valuable as I was thinking. It may honestly go for more on Amazon though. So I will probably sell it that way. All right, then here we actually have a Zelda edition Wii U, both the gamepad and the console, although the console is just black. So it's really just the gamepad that is the Zelda edition. I believe it does have the cords with it and everything. So that's a pretty solid find. Okay, and it looks like the rest of this bag actually may be PlayStation 1 games. I don't remember there being anything super groundbreaking in here, but I guess we will find out. All right, so I'm pretty much gonna go through these and tell you guys what I do know about them. And then I'll look them up off camera and tell you guys if there are any surprises. Twisted Metal 2 I know is like a uh, 15 or $20 game. We got Razor. Freestyle scooters, that one I'm pretty sure is going to be trade in. Let's get closer to the floor so I don't have to throw those things. Uh, Army men air attack, trade in. Road rash, trade in. Uh, not really sure. Atari classics, that might be worth something.
Road Rash 3D. This one is an interesting one, Puzzle Star Sweep, because it actually is brand new sealed. So that's kind of cool to see. Unfortunately, it does have a tiny uh, little crack in the case on the back there, a little rip in the seal. So this wouldn't be the kind of thing you'd send in to get graded, but still kind of cool to see nonetheless. Then finally for the PlayStation, we've got Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Definitely a solid uh, game to find. Crash Bash, I used to love this game as a kid. Caesar's Palace, no thank you. WCW Nitro, no thanks. Power Rangers Time Force could be something. Nightmare Creatures, uh, not really sure about that, but horror is another genre that's good to look for. Tom Clancy, probably not. Tomb Raider 2 again, hopefully that's worth something. Metal Gear Solid again. Spyro the Dragon with a cover, let's go. All right, so here's the official PS1 breakdown. These are all the titles that I was right about. They are going to be worth something. Uh, these were a couple that I was surprised about in a pleasant way. Fighting Force, as it turns out, is like a 40 or $50 disc. Uh, so that was really great to see. Nightmare Creatures is maybe like a 30 or so dollar game and potentially more on Amazon, so that was good as well. These three I didn't think would be worth anything, but they go from anywhere between like eight to 15 bucks or so after fees on Amazon. So uh, those are nice. These ones as expected aren't really worth much. And then finally these, I thought might be worth something. Rumble boxing, some of the Tomb Raiders, classic games, etc. cetera. Uh, that Spyro unfortunately was kind of right on the bubble, three bucks or so after fees. And I was like, eh, I'll just trade it in. So I thought these would be worth something and they actually are not. But on the bright side, I think a decent number of these titles will sell pretty well for the local game store that I do my trade ins with, which is a good thing. I don't like to just like give them all of my total junk. I feel kind of bad when I do that. I don't want it to be all shelf filler. So the fact that there are probably some titles in here that they'll be able to sell for a solid like 10 to maybe 15 bucks retail is just kind of a nice bonus, even though I wouldn't necessarily be able to get that online. So next up, I think I'm going to go for these two bins here along with uh, this little pile of GameCube games as well. Alrighty, so uh, over here is going to be stuff that I think is probably valuable. Over here is the stuff that's probably not. And we'll just start with these good old GameCube games here. Wario World, really obvious one. That's like a probably 50 plus dollar game after fees. The Kids Next Door, codename Kids Next Door. I don't really know. I would guess probably not a ton of value with that. Probably a few bucks value with this one. Again, a dog just got a hold of this thing and would not let go. Midway Arcade Treasures 2. Oh, okay. Inside is actually Sonic Adventure Battle 2. So that's a really pleasant surprise. I think that game is much more valuable. I'm gonna go ahead and take that cover art out so I don't get confused. And then last but not least, oh, that's right, the uh, Game Boy Player Startup Disc, which I think the corresponding actual Game Boy Player is somewhere else in those bins. So this will definitely uh, get sold on Amazon as well. All right, here we go. So we've got some stacks of miscellaneous games here. We've got a <laughs> sealed but really not sealed Connect Adventures here. It's just, it's peeling all over the place. All the copies of Connect Adventures I'm actually going to keep to bundle with 360 Connects. We've got the Steelbook edition of Devil May Cry on 360. I'd say sure, probably still not worth a ton.
I'm gonna go ahead and calculate some of these and see where the heck we're standing. A big point of why I'm going through this stuff this way is I hope that it's helpful to other people to give you kind of an idea of my thought process in determining whether or not games are valuable, the kinds of titles and genres and stuff that I look for and pass up on, because hopefully that will be helpful for you guys as you're out at the yard sales or the thrift stores or the pawns or wherever you like to source the most to be able to spot valuable titles more accurately. So anyway, I'm gonna start scanning these and we'll figure out if I was right. Well folks, as it turns out, I was a little bit overly optimistic with this last batch. These are all the ones that I thought wouldn't be worth anything that indeed are not worth anything, but these are all the ones that I thought might have some value and they just don't. Uh, so definitely take a look at these titles. Shrek let me down, Tom Clancy let me down, Perfect Dark, the collector's edition, really not worth anything. Anyway, these are the two titles that I will be able to squeeze like maybe five to eight dollars out of after fees that I didn't actually expect, so that is nice. And then these are the ones that I did expect that did not let me down. And this is also something that I wanna talk about, folks, because this bin did not end up panning out for me the way that I really wanted it to. I was a little bit overly optimistic about the contents. Now, I don't remember what I actually paid for this bin. I think I'm still gonna be okay and make a little bit of money. But oftentimes on these videos, I'll have people saying, man, you like ripped somebody off or you're paying too cheap. You need to give more money, blah, blah, blah. And the fact is like when you're in this business, you kind of have to plan for the worst because the truth is bins like this do happen. And if you are overly optimistic with what you're paying, it's really easy to get into trouble and to start losing money. Now, of course, I would always say go out of your way to be fair to people. If you don't, they're not going to want to do business with you again. But at the same time, you have to be savvy enough to uh, protect yourself. So I would say hope for the best, plan for the worst with the offers that you are giving on stuff because in addition to sometimes maybe finding fewer valuable titles than you thought in a big lot like this, it could also be that some of these valuable titles end up getting returned because they might not work. So anyways, that's my two cents, my rant for the day on buying bulk collections like this. I'm gonna clear this table off and we'll do it again with the next bin. All right, so this load will be a lot of fun. We've got a whole bunch of cartridge stuff, mostly N64 stuff, as you can see, along with over here, a baggie full of disc only games that I have not so much as peeked at. So let's get into this and see what the heck we have. I cannot remember, it looks like we've got two two copies of 1080 snowboarding. I can't remember if that actually goes for anything. I'm gonna say no. Uh, NFL Blitz 2000 I think does go for something. This one doesn't. F1 World Grand Prix, I cannot remember. Oh, look at that, Tigger's Honey Hunt. If I didn't already have this, I would definitely keep it for the collection because I am a big poo game collector. Wow. Then this is kind of cool actually. Four different blue N64, oh okay. I guess we do have a double here. Let me know below if you know how many blue N64 games there were. I know that there's also a Tony Hawk game was blue. I can't think of any other ones. Madden 01 is trash. Backstage Assault, I can't really remember, but because it's wrestling, I'm gonna say maybe. Bassmaster 2000, no. And then again, right here, we've got a whole stack of black in 64 games. WrestleMania, I know, is a good one. Madden, no. Scooby-Doo, classic creep caper uh, is another valuable title. WWF, no. Mercy, ooh, two of those. That's another good one to find. Then we have Armorines Project Swarm. For some reason, my brain is telling me this one's not worth anything.
Got a couple of PSP games that I don't really think are gonna be worth anything. Then we finally have the bag of mystery discs here. Resident Evil 5, I don't think so. No, Madden 08, no, no, no. ATV, that is a really fun game. I had that as a kid, but not worth anything. No, Jack 2, I don't think so. With some top scratching, that's no good. Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. Boy, a lot of these discs are really scratched. I wonder if that's why they were all in the baggie there. I am not optimistic about any of those. And here is the new absolute mess of a table, but sorted nonetheless. These here are the titles that I thought would be worth something that weren't actually a lot of like wrestling stuff and miscellaneous. Uh, these are the titles that I didn't really think would be worth much, but actually are. So I wanted to show you guys these uh, 1080. Jeopardy, rest in peace, Alex, uh, actually does go for about 10 after fees. This one, Wheel of Fortune as well, is in that same range, maybe eight or so after fees, but super slow seller on that. Tigger's Honey Hunt should have had a little bit more faith, actually will sell for profit on Amazon. A uh, Bug's Life was the big surprise. I have two of these and they should go for around 20 or so after fees on Amazon. I don't know if that's inflated or not. I'll have to check eBay. And then Battle Tanks was also in like, I believe the $10 range. Then the only other ones from the profitable pile that I did guess right that I wanted to highlight was that WWF No Mercy is going for around 35 bucks after fees these days. So if you do see these underpriced wherever you do source video games, definitely uh, pick them up. Cause I believe that's one of the more valuable wrestling titles on the N64, but people may be likely to sleep on it just cause it is a sports title. All right, and so as for these remaining bins, we do have a couple really interesting pieces in this one, this complete soul silver with the pokey walker and everything. Uh, paid, I think, 75 for that, so that was a pretty solid deal. And then this Hyrule Edition 3DS XL, just a really nice, uh, still in the plastic and everything in there. I paid up for this one at 200 bucks. I would guess after fees and stuff, I'll only get probably two to 300 or so. So not the highest margin on this guy, but uh, Robert, the guy that I bought all this stuff from, gave me deals on some other stuff. So I thought that was okay. Then over here, we do have this uh, N-Gage QD. Uh, by Nokia. I've ever actually never actually found one of these before, but it is kind of cool. It's in the original box. Uh, he wanted to give this to me for free, but I paid 10 bucks. I think I should probably be able to get 40 or so, even though the actual unit does have a cracked screen. The rest of this box and also this box, honestly, is just a bunch of controllers and miscellaneous systems that I'll have to sort out and test. Really not, honestly, that interesting. Uh, we do have these, a few Odyssey 2 games, which don't hold hardly any value at all. Oh, except for this case also was a whole bunch of miscellaneous disc only games, which I'll open up for you guys as well. We'll see if there's anything worthwhile in there. And then the last box that we will examine fully will be this one because it has a whole bunch of Sega Saturn gold in here, which will be exciting to go through because I know almost nothing about the value of Sega Saturn games, except that the Japanese ones don't tend to bring as much. Oh, and look at this little hitchhiker in here. Wow! As well as a few more cartridge titles. Doesn't look like really any more uh, games of value on the N64 side. But yeah, let's bring over this little bin and also so these uh, disc only PlayStation games and see what the heck we find. All right, so as we hop into this little case right here, I did wanna let you guys know I've been fooling around with my YouTube metrics a little bit recently uh, and come to find out that at this point, about 56% of the folks who watch my average video are subscribed to the channel. So just wanted to ask you guys if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button while you're here, that would mean a lot to me. And then I'll try to remember at some point in the future after this video actually drops to give you guys an update on whether or not we were actually able to make a dent in that. But right now, let's turn our attention to these PlayStation games. Got a couple of casino games. Those almost never tend to go for money. Pirates, oftentimes games made after movies as well, uh, don't tend to do that well. This one I'm almost sure is worth money. 50 cent bulletproof. So I'll let you guys know on that one. The Incredible Hulk, uh, maybe. I'll take that one out as well. Nothing really of note on this page. Iron Man, I would say maybe. I know that that is a movie game as well, but sometimes superhero ones are good to look at. This one's interesting too. Looks like it could maybe be horror or like a comedy horror kind of a game. We got Batman and Transformers. I will look all these up before I actually sell them or trade them in, but I wanted to give you guys a glimpse. What is this? 
Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. I can't remember seeing that game before, so I'll look that up as well. Well folks, bad news on the PS2. Apparently these are all the games that I thought would be worth something that in reality aren't. <laughs> For a lot of them I was thinking of other titles uh, that I was just confused on. These are the few that actually are worth something. Uh, but hey, I guess I will take what I can get. I think I paid 20 bucks for this overall. So, you know, I'll make my money back and make a little bit, but that's kind of how parts of these deals go. All right, so here is our lovely final bin. I would not guess that almost anything in here will be worthless. I think the Sega Saturn games that I don't end up selling individually, I'm just gonna put in my shed to take to a uh, video game conference called Game Jam that I'm going to on May 1st. Cause I know that there are tons of collectors out there that are looking for Sega Saturn filler titles because they're just so uncommon. But if nothing else, I did want to go through and at least show you guys what all is in here because... But if nothing else, I did want to just go through and show you guys what all is in here and then also any standout titles once I look them all up. So as far as the few N64 games that we have in here, really the only one that caught my eye as being worth anything was this Jet Force Gemini. I think that's like maybe a $10 game after fees. So uh, these games will be some of the few in the box that really I don't think are worth all that much. But then let's just start out with uh, some of these Saturn games that are in disc only condition. We've got Command and Conquer, uh, another copy of Command and Conquer. Oh, it looks like these two are actually part of the same game. We've got True Pinball. This is one of those Japanese games with like the uh, gold on the side there that actually probably isn't worth as much. It's called Blazing Tornado. Holy cow, you can barely even read that font. Brain Dead 13, another Japanese one, Vampire Hunter, Virtua Fighter Remix, F1 Challenge, Soviet Strike. We've got Black Fire, Off World, Interceptor Extreme. Just actually a lot more disc only titles than I really was expecting. Oh yeah, this was a cool one. This goes for around 40 or 50 in disc only condition, Christmas Nights Into Dreams sampler disc. Man, we've got another big stack here, Mist. That's kind of weird, Sega Saturn bootleg sampler. I have never heard of that. X-Men vs. Street Fighter, I think will be one of the more valuable titles in this lot. We've got Tetris Plus, another Japanese one, House of the Dead. Heir of Zendor, Legend of the Land, VR Golf, Minnesota something. And then finally, we've got all of the big long box Sega Saturn games that do uh, have their original cases. Oh, of course, we also have Dayton USA as well as Last Bronx. But here we have Fighters Mega Mix. I like the uh, potential of that one. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, the ultimate fighting game. That one looks pretty good. PGA Tour 97, not looking so good. Independence Day. We've got World Series Baseball, Blazing Dragons, Tomb Raider, Hardcore 4x4, Sega Sports, Sega Rally, Amok, it's kind of a cool looking game, Wing Arms, PTO2, we've got Mortal Kombat 2 here, NBA Action. Then finally, before we have the console here at last, although I don't know, I'm not sure where the controller ended up for this, it might be in one of the other bags. Uh, we've got NASCAR 98, Quarterback Attack, Gun Griffin. I think this is one that we also had loose, actually. NBA Jam Tournament Edition, Madden 97, and finally, Daytona USA. So I'm going to go through, scan all of these bad boys, and figure out what the heck the most interesting ones are. All right, folks, here is the distribution of the final batch. Over here, we have the titles and also one empty case. 
uh, that I am going to be just taking to that con and selling individually, maybe for like, I don't know, five bucks a piece or something like that. We've got a bunch of discs here. And then over on this side, we've got some uh, really solid titles that I'm going to be throwing on eBay. None of these are actually going to go on Amazon because of how collectible they are. And then a whole bunch of lo loose discs that are worth in like the 15 to up to 30 range. These were some of the titles I did want to highlight for you guys. Uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat, I believe, is like a $70 or $80 game complete. Fighters Mega Mix is another one that is pretty valuable. I want to say like maybe in the 40 to 50 range, if I remember correctly. Contra, even disc only, there is only one listed right now for uh, 80 bucks. So I would guess loose, maybe like a $70 game or so complete. It goes for over 100. And then Shinobi Le Legions here is also, I believe, like a 30 to $40 game. What's up folks, Editing Caleb here. Just wanted to jump in here really quick and say that a lot of the titles in this video will end up going off to Amazon fairly quickly uh, before this video is actually posted. But if you are interested in any of them, you're welcome to check out my eBay store because that's where a lot of the more expensive or collectible titles will go. Um, if you are interested in those, definitely DM me on Instagram and I'll be able to give you like 15% off and we can just, we can cut eBay out of the picture and uh, let them avoid fees, give you a bit of a better deal but anything that I do have uh, for sale for the public by this point will be available uh, in my eBay store which is linked in the description. Wow. So yeah, that will pretty much conclude what we're doing here today in this video. All that I have left to do is test out all of the consoles, sort through them with their cords and controllers, test the controllers as well, prep all of this stuff, which includes like wiping it all down and cleaning the pins on the cartridges and then actually listing everything on either Amazon or eBay, wherever it goes. This stuff, it's definitely going to take a lot of work. And don't get me wrong, reselling video games is a ton of fun. It's always great to be able to handle and look at all of this stuff. It tends to sell pretty quick, but I just want everybody watching to know that it also is a ton of work. Each one of these games is gonna have to get uh, cleaned and listed with the condition noted. And then all of these box are going to be an entirely separate issue. But let me know what you guys think of this video style. To me, it kind of almost feels like you know, I'm just going through inventory that I've already bought before. I'm a little bit worried it might be getting a little bit slow, a little boring, but you guys can let me know. I hope that it's at least somewhat instructive and gives you guys a good look at what it's actually like to be a video game reseller and hopefully some titles and genres and stuff that you can look for on your own as you are out hunting. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I will catch you on the flip. Wow.